Bond enthalpy, also called bond energy or bond association energy, it's going to be the topic of this lesson. We'll find out we've now got a third tool in our arsenal that will allow us to calculate delta H of a reaction. So a couple chapters ago we learned about Hess's law and we learned about using enthalpies of formation, which were products minus reactants. Well, we'll find out with bond enthalpy it'll actually be reactants minus products instead, but another nice plug and chug way to calculate the delta H of a reaction. This lesson is part of my high school chemistry playlist. I'll be releasing these lessons weekly throughout the 2020-21 school year. So if you don't want to miss one, subscribe to the channel, click the bell notifications, you'll be notified every time I post a new lesson. All right, so bond enthalpy. This is the energy required to break a bond. That's why they also call it a bond dissociation energy. The energy for a bond to dissociate, for two atoms to dissociate from apart from each other. And what you should realize is that bond breaking is endothermic. To break a bond, it costs energy. So if you pull the atoms apart and that costs energy, well then when those atoms come together and form a bond, it'll actually release energy. So bond breaking is endothermic, bond making or bond forming ends up being exothermic. And that last one seems a little counterintuitive, but students don't often struggle realizing that, yeah, yeah, break a bond, that's gonna cost energy. But they don't realize that when you make a bond, then it actually releases energy. So that's what you need to take home here. So, but if we use these bond enthalpies or bond energies or bond association energies, so what you find out is that you just need to take the sum of all the reactant values and subtract out the sum of all the product values. Now it turns out if you can isolate actually which bonds are being broken and formed, you can actually make it even easier. You can take the sum of all the bonds broken minus the sum of all the bonds formed. That way you're not recounting on both parts of the calculation bonds that were never broken or formed that appear in both the reactants and the products. Eliminating those just reduces it down to broken minus formed. Now, this is another way we use to calculate delta H. And again, we couldn't use this way because we hadn't actually learned to draw Lewis structures yet. It turns also though, this way is actually more approximate. So when we use Hess's law and enthalpies of formation, those are exact ways to calculate delta H. This one's approximate because these bond enthalpies or bond energies, they're averages. It turns out they can be slightly different in different molecules and stuff. And so this is gonna be more of an approximation and it's usually a pretty decent approximation, but an approximation nonetheless. So we're gonna calculate delta H for this reaction based on the values provided for you on your table on the study guide there. Uh, and in this case, we first gotta draw these out. So if we draw some Lewis structures. So it turns out N2H4 looks like this. I'm not gonna go actually through the process of drawing the Lewis structure since we covered that in the last lesson, but this is what N2H4 would end up looking like. So it turns out for oxygen, we'd end up with a double bond in O2. And then for nitrogen, it turns out it would end up being a triple bond. And then for our water molecules, we've got two of them. And when you've got more than one in a balanced reaction, for bond energies, I highly recommend you draw them all out. It's easy to forget you've got multiple copies of a molecule and miss some things there. So, so here we go. This is what we got to, to work with. And if we look at that table that's on your hand out there, so we can see how much energy it would cost to break all of these bonds. So first one listed is the NH bond, and that's 391. I'm going to point that out right here. In fact, let's color code this. There's 391. And then the OH bond is 463. Uh, next one on the list there is the oxygen oxygen double bond, and that is 495. And then the nitrogen nitrogen triple bond, nope, nitrogen nitrogen single bond is next at 163. That's this guy. And then finally, the nitrogen nitrogen triple bond is there at 941. Okay. So I color coded these. I put these in blue because these are the bonds on the reactant side that we're going to be breaking. It's going to cost energy to break them. It's going to be endothermic, which is why I made it blue. So Whereas these are gonna be exothermic, they're gonna release this much energy, not actually cost this much energy, but that's why we end up doing reactants minus products. So because we add these values in, this is the energy cost, but this is energy that is released, it's negative. Now we don't actually flip the sign on this and make it negative 941 or negative 463. We're subtracting in our equation here that accounts for that for us. So no, no need to switch those signs or anything like that. Uh, but from here, it's gonna be plug and chug. You do have to factor in how many of each of these bonds you have.
Now, in our case, all these bonds are broken and all these bonds are formed. So we're really just going to be doing reactants minus products. So however, if you had, you know, two similar looking structures where it was like one bond broken, another bond formed and stuff, you could actually simplify this immensely, but not going to really help us in this case. So let's take a look at our calculation here. So delta H, our reaction is going to equal. So in this case, we got one of these bonds. So 163 plus we've got four of these. So four times 391 plus one double bond here. So 495. And then we'll subtract the sum of these guys. So 941. And then we've got four of these OH bonds in our two molecules. That's why I drew it out twice. So I wouldn't realize uh, I wouldn't miss a couple of those bonds. So four times 463. And let's pull that handy dandy calculator out here. So 163 plus four. Let's free up a hand here. So four times 391 plus 495 minus the sum of 941 plus four times 463, all in parentheses there for the second half. And we're gonna get negative 571. Cool, and just a nice plug and chug calculation. Now, once again, this is truth be told, actually more approximate. So again, if you use enthalpy of formation or Hess's law, you get an exact number. So, but this one's approximate because these bond energies that we see right here are themselves approximate. So they vary just a little bit from molecule to molecule and stuff like that. Cool, that's it for the lesson here. So one quick thing, and again, a reminder, remember that super important, bond breaking is endothermic, bond making is exothermic. That's a conceptual thing you're definitely gonna wanna take away from this lesson as well. If you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? Or if you just feel sorry for short, bald people, please give me a like and a share. So if you're looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, or if you are looking for practice problems on bond energies, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com.